This video on The Sims 4 Cats and Dogs is sponsored by EA. However, my opinions are still my own, and keep in mind that this is from an earlier build of this expansion pack. Quick, assume cute formation. <laughs> hey folks, how's it going? This is Iron Seagull here, back with one last sponsored video related to cats and dogs. So, you probably knew already that seagulls have been added into the game, as well as sandpipers. But this time, unlike previous worlds, these seagulls are actually interactive, not just decoration. Yeah, that's right. I'm making a whole video dedicated to seagulls and sandpipers. I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't be right if I didn't do it. Iron Seagull, heck yeah. It's kind of cool, actually, because last year when I was at Sims Camp for City Living, I did request to the Simgrus that they apply the advanced technology for the pigeons to seagulls, and sure enough, they <laughs> delivered on my request and actually surpassed my expectations. And although I don't have footage of them, the pigeons in this world are interactive in the same way too. I didn't have enough time to see if that also applies to the ones in San Myshuno, but I'm guessing it is only going to apply to the ones in Brindleton Bay. And you can only interact with the ones that are on the ground, like those ones right there, no, you can't do anything with them, but I do think it's pretty funny and very accurate that they have these seagulls just perching wherever they please. That's very accurate <laughs> to how they act in real life from someone who observes their behavior. It almost does feel like the Sim Gurus actually kind of studied them too. Because <laughs> they actually do feel very realistic. You can even see there's ones that stand with the leg up and seagulls actually do that in real life to keep themselves warm. So there you go. There's another so-called hint <laughs> for, uh, for everyone who's really, really wanting seasons to return. Unfortunately, the sandpipers cannot be interacted with. They're just there to look cute, but I still love them anyways. <laughs> But let's get into the range of interactions available with the seagulls and the pigeons. So, as a sim, you can attack a flock or chase flock. And then you also have the option of having your dog or cat chase after them as well, which is what you're already seeing. But the, with the attack and chase flock, I haven't really noticed much of a difference, except for the moodlet that you can get. If I remember correctly, attacking a flock makes a sim feel more confident, and if they chase them, that makes them feel energized. So if you want to encourage your sims to do even more random push-ups, start them off by chasing some seagulls, and you're well on your way. And I did capture the confident moodlet, which is called Bird Brain, from attacking a bird flock. Daniela sure showed those birds. So that's a good alternative way to get your sims confident fast, other than talking to themselves in the mirror. Also, if you do happen to chase off a flock of seagulls or pigeons, they will return to their original spots after a short period of time, so you don't need to worry about having to leave the neighborhood and coming back to see them again, so that's good. It's still pretty natural that way. There is a reward other than the moodlets though, because there's a whole new collection type called feathers, so you can collect about a dozen types of bird feathers. Oh, I actually didn't even know that at all during my gameplay because my interview with SimGuru Romeo, where I learned about that, took place after all the time that I had to play Cats and Dogs. So I wasn't able to really go back and get any pictures or footage of that. But I guess at least that is something for me to discover for myself once I have the final version of this expansion pack. And I just really like how the seagulls seem to have a bit of personality and just sass overall because you can see like them shuffling their feet and shaking their tail feathers a little bit. Yeah, it, it's pretty cute. I do wish that the seagulls and sandpipers looked a little bit more detailed, but I think they still look alright for the purpose that they serve. And that about wraps up my video on seagulls. I think the fact that I was able to talk this much about one really small feature says a lot about how much effort and attention to detail went into cats and dogs as a whole product. I honestly do feel like the expansion pack team stepped up their game this year, and if this kind of effort continues, then I think The Sims 4 has a potentially bright future ahead of it. 
As of right now, according to Origin, I have played The Sims 4 for a total of about 1,500 hours since I got it on launch day back in 2014. Cats and Dogs, I can imagine easily bumping that number up to 2,000 and beyond. I hope you're looking forward to seeing my future videos on Cats and Dogs once I have a final retail copy of the game. So be sure to leave a like or a comment or even subscribe because it lets me know that you like my channel my videos and it helps you keep up to date more easily with the latest content for me. I do videos on The Sims, Sonic the Hedgehog, and more. So I will talk to you all later, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.